Well, welcome to this week's episode of Scouting for History, and welcome to Avondale. Built in 1785, this was the summer home of the very famous Revolutionary War hero, early American patriot, all-around great guy, everyone knows him, Thomas Leeper. Who? You've never heard of Thomas Leeper? Well, don't worry about it. No one's heard of him. <laughs> but I like to call this guy the Forrest Gump of early America. Uh, stick around. We'll start digging. We'll see if we can find anything historic. And you'll learn more about why I call him the Forrest Gump. So stay tuned. Now, two quick things before we get started. First of all, this is a historic area. It's owned by the town and managed by a historic trust. So I have permission to be here. They, they invited me here. They've done digs in the past, but they invited me here to see what I could find uh, with a metal detector. Hopefully I can find some historic stuff and it goes on display. Across the street, there's a nice little park. Uh, it all was part of the estate at one time, so it's all managed by the uh, trust and by the town. I have permission over there as well. Uh, so this is going to be a multiple day thing. And hopefully we can find some really good stuff. And point number two, no offense to Thomas Leeper, calling him the Forrest Gump. And by that, I don't mean anything to do with his mental capacity or anything. Uh, what I mean is this is a guy who was everywhere. He did everything. He knew everyone. Uh, he had connections. So for somebody who was everywhere, saw everything, knew everyone, it's incredible how he isn't more famous. Stay tuned, let's see what we can find. So for today, I'm gonna crank up the sensitivity to, eh, we'll go in the, uh, above 25 a little bit. I'll be in field mode. Uh, we'll go to, you know what? I'm gonna go to all metal because there might be some iron relics here we might wanna try and recover. Um, I'm going to keep it in M1. I haven't done the uh, the new update, the 1.09. I looked over the, the uh, specs for it, and I don't see anything urgent. Uh, a lot of it was for beaches and so on. So uh, let's see. We will do... Uh, I'll do a frequency shift after this. I'm going to do a uh, recovery speed of 4 to start with. I may change that. All right. So there we go. I think that'll do it. Let's get started. I haven't had very many good signals. I'm getting something here. Mid 40s. Could be a penny. That's what the last one was. But it's not. Well, I don't have my glasses, so I'm not quite sure, but that definitely looks older than a penny. I'll clean it up, you'll see it right here. So Thomas Leeper moved from Scotland to America back in 1760s and traveled around America till he finally settled in Philadelphia and became a tobacco merchant. He had a modest little business until one day, 4th of July, 1776, war broke out uh, and the country declared independence and the largest tobacco company in Philadelphia at the time was linked to the crown so the, the continental uh, congress shut down that tobacco company and suddenly leaper found himself the biggest tobacco company in the biggest city in america uh, so suddenly overnight he was very very wealthy kind of like forrest gump with the shrimp boat but instead of a hurricane it was the revolutionary war now when the war broke out being a good scotsman he immediately joined the re revolution <laughs> to fight for independence 
Uh, and not only that, but he was one of the founding members of the city troop of Philadelphia, a cavalry unit, an uh, independent cavalry unit, uh, and one of the oldest uh, army units in the country that's still in existence. Um, it's, it still operates in Philadelphia uh, under the jurisdiction of the Pennsylvania National Guard, but it's been there since the Revolutionary War. Uh, it's a it's an unusual army unit, but he was one of the founding members Well, not sure what I'm chasing here Could be could be just junk yeah, It's a giant old rusty nail Gave a good signal because of the hook in it, but it was pretty deep in there It gave a little squeak said there was there might be iron in the hole too and there was you can't skip those kind of things because you never know in a historic area like this it could be something good on to the next so Lipa took part in the Continental Congress he was a delegate from Pennsylvania uh, he hobnobbed with people like Ben Franklin Thomas Jefferson George Washington as a matter of fact the city troop became Washington's bodyguard during the Revolutionary War. They rode with him everywhere he went. So the city troop was present at every battle that George Washington was at, the city troop was there. So he was everywhere. Then when after the war, he was a wealthy merchant, he came here to this little valley along a creek where he built mills uh, for processing tobacco and quarries for building all kinds of buildings in Philadelphia and the surrounding area. But to get the quarry stone to the river, he built the country's first railroad right here along this creek. Now, today when you think of railroad, you think of trains, but back then there were no steam engines, but there were railroads. You'd build rails uh, and a cart and have oxen or draft horses or something pull the carts to move heavy loads a long distance. So, first railroad in the United States was right here. Here's a nice mid 40s, best signal I've had in a long time. Alright, whatever it is, it's still in the hole. Of course, the hole isn't very deep. <laughs> the ground is so dry still. It is a memorial. <laughs> oh well, that's what you get sometimes. On to the next. It's a tiny little button. Cool. I thought I heard a second signal in here, but probably not. Yes, I did. A bottle cap. On to the next. Probably another pin. But just in case. A 45-46 signal right here. Nothing jumps out at me. Oh. 
except for a big hunk of copper. All right, on to the next. Well, it's a beautiful day today. You know, there's an old story about uh, you put a frog in a pot of water, you slowly raise the temperature. By the time the frog realized it's being cooked, it's too late. Well, something similar works with the detectorists in the rain. Last time I was here, about a week ago, it was overcast. Yeah, I still started detecting. Then it was misty. And then it was a light sprinkle, and then a little heavier, and a little heavier. Before I knew it, there was mud all over the lens. Everything I had was muddy. I was drenched. But half my footage is gone because of, uh, you, you just can't hear it because of the rain, you, or you can't see it because of the mud on the lens. So, uh, I finally called it, but it was too late. Um, so, now I'm back again. And we'll see what we can find here at the Leaper House. Stay tuned. Well, I'm down here by the uh, gravel drive. It's some kind of a uh, decorative piece. I'll clean it up. You'll see it right here. But that's cool. See if we can't find anything else. On we go. Probably a clad quarter, but you know. And it's down here in the hole. Oh, no, there it is. And it is a clad quarter. Wow, it's not even that old. It's a state quarter. <laughs> ah, well, it must be colonial. It's got George Washington on it. On to the next. Well, I'm not sure what it is. I'll have to clean it up when I get home. It might just be trash, but it might be something interesting. On to the next. Well, no idea what I have here. I'm hoping I get something like a button or something eventually instead of a piece of wire yikes that was it all right nothing to see here Move along. well so far it's been slow going today but uh nice high tone signal in here oh, ow. and it is an old key. That's cool. That's a really old one. Alright. On we go. Real nice high tone here. Here it is. 
it's another large thing. Look at that. That's awesome. Well, now there's an awesome sight. I was just sad, thinking to myself, coins are great, but I'd love to find some relics or something from the time period. And then I get this. That's awesome. Oh, I think I hit it. That's awesome. Got something? And another one. Awesome. Quite a collection. Let's go. And of course, every house has to have an outhouse. Wow, look at that. Four, four toilets, no waiting. Two for kids. <laughs> On we go. Well, I find lots of car, uh, toy cars in yards. This is the first time I've found just the door. No car, just the door. <laughs> On to the next. Well, that was a fight to get that out from the roots. <laughs> I'll clean it up. It looks like it's some sort of plumbing piece. Very old. I'll clean it up. That'll look good on display. On to the next. Well, this here was the uh, payroll office or the bank. Well, I don't know whether it's open or not. Mm, I'm not going to try and open it. But a uh, very sturdy building. Look at the little tiny windows. So, no burglaries happening here. All right, let's go. Well, like so many things that come out of the ground, I have no idea what it is. But uh, I'll clean up and see if I can figure it out. On to the next. Well, I'm on my way to the car. Well, I'm on my way to the car, and down here along the carriage path, I thought I found a piece of trash, but it's got gears in it. I think this is a tiny little clock face. So I'll clean it up and see. But uh, if it is, that's awesome. It's really heavy. <laughs> it looks very, very old. All right, I'll take it Well, that's going to do it for today. What an awesome day. A lot of fun. Much better weather than the last time. Uh, but stand by. I'm going to do a complete wrap-up of everything uh, that I found here. So stand by. That's next.